this video we're going to talk a little bit about editing photographs. Now before we begin one thing to point out especially if you are the one taking the photographs you want to be aware of how you are taking the photograph and things such as your f-stop, your exposure, and how vibrant the colors are. How much does it look like what it looked like in real life? The reason I bring this up is because there is a misconception among digital artists and photographers who are new to this process that we can fix anything in these type of software packages such as GIMP, Lightroom, Photoshop, etc. That's not the case. If you take a bad photograph, it's still a bad photograph, period. So this is why often on the photography side, you'll see people taking upwards uh, at events, et cetera, taking upwards to you know the thousands of photographs. And out of that thousand, they may only get 10 or 15 good ones. So let's go ahead and take a look at this picture here. Honestly, a lot of the photos on Pixabay, folks really do do a nice job. However, we could make this pop a little bit more. Honestly, to me, especially, you know, in this area up here and kind of down here, the white balance looks a little off. It actually looks a little dull. So in these type of software packages, you actually have a lot of options that you can play with as far as editing the overall photograph. And these can actually be found under the color dropdown. Now, before I dive into this color dropdown, again, it isn't a matter that you're taking a photo and saying, okay, I'm going to go ahead and I know right out of the gate, I'm going to go into colors and I'm going to work with the color temperature or I'm going to work with the brightness and contrast. You don't want to have a mindset like that. You actually want to really try your best to have a photograph that you're not sitting there and saying, okay, I need to go in and actually clean this up a little bit. So to take you through here, as far as some of these options go, first off, if you are not using any of the selection tools, these are going to affect the entire photograph. So you have things such as color balance, you have the color temperatures, you have your hue, your chroma, your lightness that you can tweak. And I encourage you to come through these and play with each of them. You know, for instance, this is a tricky one. I want to point out exposure. I have so many students that will under or overexpose an image and they may only take one picture and they say to themselves, you know what, I can jump into GIMP or Photoshop or Lightroom and I can just tweak the exposure. Well, just to show you here when you're working with these, normally with all of these different color drop downs, you're going to have some sort of set of options here as far as what you can work with. So in this case, I have exposure itself. However, you also have the black levels or shadows, but just to show you what happens with exposure here, if I start taking this up a little bit, you see how already at like 1.0, 1.2, I'm already blowing out the photograph here. So I say, oh, you know what? Well, maybe I want to have, you know, in the negative. And once again here, let me go down to like 1.0 here. You see how it's just washing out. It's almost like a foggy day, a cloudy day there. So while you may be saying, oh, well, I can totally come in and tweak this photo and fix it, that might not be the case if you under or overexpose a graphic. So I'm going to cancel out of this here. Now, having said that, though, coming back up to the top here a little bit, I have gone into things like color balance and color temperature, hue saturation. Actually, hue saturation is kind of one of my favorites here. Um, it's honestly, you can kind of get some neat effects if you play with it properly. So like here, you can see I'm changing the hue and I'm getting a much pinkier type of watermelon color there. So maybe I actually take down the saturation. I can get to a straight grayscale if I want to, or I can completely oversaturate if I'm going for a different effect there. So that's one thing being a the designer side of things. If you're working with straight digital photography, then yes, you want to make sure that you're taking a photograph that really fits the overall design here. However, from being the multimedia artist side of things, we have a little bit more play here. So like you can see, actually, you know, that's kind of a really cool look that I got going on there for the graphic. 
little bit washed out in the highlights in the midtones and then even the shadows like I can really see it down here on the raspberries they almost look flat in comparison to say like the blueberries look a little bit better there um, even the blackberries have a little bit more depth to them but the raspberries are being lost in with the watermelon with all of these color options another thing too is way at the bottom here every single one of them you're going to have some sort of preview option by default preview is on honestly in all the years i've been working with these type of software packages i really never saw a reason to turn preview off when i, I mean i'm not guessing blindly when i am doing this type of work now gimp does offer you something called the split view that you can turn on and off and pretty much it is just that you can it'll give you kind of the original reference graphic that you can see in comparison to what you've changed in the overall graphic so kind of a cool effect there and kind of honestly very helpful all right so i'm going to cancel out of this again one more time the real power though whenever you're working with editing a photo where you can get some quick just real punch to the to the overall design is through levels and curve. Within levels here, you're working with three values. You're working with the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. Now, as you can see here, you've got a graph. And don't worry, this isn't math or anything related to that. But what you're dealing with here is the, it's pretty much going through and measuring the overall graphic and showing you how the values play out here. And on the bottom here, you have shadows, the black, the midtones, which are denoted as gray, and then your highlights, which are white. And as you can see, we're really heavy set over here on white. We can honestly blame as far as uh, the plate and things like that. Now there's a couple ways to actually work with this graphic here, or as working with the levels. If I start to take down as far as the highlights, you see what's happening here? What this is saying based on this specific little arrow here, and I know it's hard to see, is everything after this arrow should be considered a highlight. So it's honestly, it's a little rare that I actually go and move that. If anything, it's the midtones that I have to kind of tweak and fix. So you see how you begin to fix the midtones there? You're giving less space as far as the shadows because now it's considering between shadows and midtones. So maybe I actually take this back a little bit. Kind of bring up the shadows a little bit. Like honestly, that's looking pretty good. Like I'm getting much more detail. It's, it's not as white balanced as I'd like, but you can see like the watermelon especially looks way more robust, uh, juicier, you could say. So that's one of the ways that you can work with this. And it's more, there's no set value. There's no specifics. It, it all depends on the photograph and what's in your photograph that you're working with. Personally, a faster process to this. Levels I use if I have to really get into the nuts and bolts of the graphic. But let me cancel out here. Another quick way to get kind of some punch to your colors is the curves. The curves are very similar where they are taking into consideration here as far as the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. Now I'm going to go ahead here. You do have a blending option here that you can work with, but really the biggest thing is whenever I'm working with the curves, is pulling down on the midtones and increasing the highlight values here. So you're making kind of this S shape with your curve line. Right now, the curve overall, it's actually set as far as the values. It is sampling R, G, and B. If you really wanted to, you could come in and work with each individual color. That's super nitty gritty uh, at that point. So what I'm gonna do is kind of pick an area here, click and hold, and I'm gonna just tug down a little bit and you can actually already see here as far as this midtone goes. You see how already I'm kind of getting a much more vibrant uh, red going on here. The greens are actually starting to pop out a little more. However, yes, if you look at the white element areas, it's it looks flat. It looks gray almost. So that's where now I come up into the upper portion. 
and kind of pull that curve up there a little bit and you see how much more that pops now. Not only are the overall blueberries popping, but also now I've got more of that white balance going on. So let me go ahead, I'm gonna actually say okay on this one. So it doesn't look as washed out now, it looks a little bit more 3D. And again, that all comes down to these color elements that you can work with here. Now, two tools that I do wanna add into this little mini lecture is the dodge and burn tool. You can lighten or darken as far as the overall design using a brush element here. So by default here, you have two types. You have dodge and you have burn. But also going back to that range discussion here, you can actually choose how you're working with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose one of the more airbrushy type brushes here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this on the default of dodge and midtones. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in maybe to this leaf here and begin to do a light dodge there to kinda make it a little bit brighter there. You're now getting into really the finesse, the nuances of working with graphics here as far as photo editing and manipulation. You don't want the user to be able to tell what you have edited. So for instance, like if I come up here and kind of just follow along here and just do a quick pass over that, you can see already, you can't really tell. I've had folks that'll come in and be like, okay, like this blueberry for instance. And as you can see, dodge means lighten. This goes back to black and white photography where we would actually take things like spoons or shapes and we would do overexposure around the black on the black and white photography but we would lay something over a specific area so that it was dodged from the exposure and it appeared lighter. But like, I'll have folks that'll come in and, you know, just, you know, they're going all out here and it's really obvious, you know, that they went in and over dodged. Again, very subtle as far as going in and cleaning up graphic. Burn, on the other hand, is the way it sounds. You're overexposing a specific area here. So I may actually want to do that, for instance, like maybe right along here, like get a deeper shadow going on. Again, real subtle. I work in literal kind of click strokes where you click once and just drag over it, see how it looks, go again. That you can make the shadows start to pop a little bit more as far as their tones. Again, as I said earlier regarding colors, these are the types of things that I can't tell you specific values, I can't define. It's more of you're looking at the specific photograph you're working with and you're having to determine how to tweak the photograph. And that's something you just gotta train your eye over time. It can take years to train your eye, and that's okay. But that gives you an overview as far as some of the basic editing elements that you can do to a photograph inside a GIMP.